Let's take a look at a few more components of the human diet. We talked about vitamin C in part one. Here's the organic structure of vitamin C. Very different from minerals, right? Minerals are just going to be uh, little calcium ions or magnesium ions. But anyways, here's vitamin C. Some stuff we need to know here. Uh, the recommended amount is 10 milligrams per day. That's pretty low. Some people take like 1,000 milligrams a day. That apparently is the level needed to prevent scurvy, uh, basically. And... Uh, the recommended daily amounts are actually higher to provide some kind of safety margin. Vitamin C has been really famous in the news. People talk about you know different things that you can do. This dude, Mr. Linus Pauling, chemist and Nobel Prize laureate, uh, really famous guy, and he came out and started telling people uh, if you actually take tons of vitamin C, tons of vitamin vitamin C, um, you can actually protect against upper respiratory tract infections, and the evidence for that is kind of shaky but he's important he's a big dude and so everyone was listening to him and so it becomes a pretty uh, good way to go about so what do we need vitamin c for well it leads to scurvy right and scurvy is the, you know the, the famous pirate disease where you end up with um like bleeding gums and and bleeding hair follicles and stuff like that it's actually needed for collagen fibers which are uh kind of fibrous structural proteins that are found in the skin and blood vessel cell walls and you need them to prevent scurvy and back in the day when people kind of loose about uh experiments you could do on humans in world war ii actually and some of these people who didn't want to go fight they were conscientious objectors but they decided to donate their bodies to science and so there's one particular case um 20 volunteers decided to see how vitamin C volunteer in an experiment, see how vitamin C actually does help or does not help. Uh, from, from these 20 volunteers, three were kept at high... At the beginning, they were all given lots of vitamin C, and then uh, three were kept at that high level. Seven were brought down to like a minimum level, and then 10 stopped receiving. All of them, this is really messed up, they were all cut and given like cut in the thigh and given uh, some stitches, and it turns out the people who stopped receiving vitamin C... Um, couldn't heal, so they couldn't actually fix themselves up because it turns out uh, blood clotting and forming scabs requires a lot of this collagen. And anyways, they had bleeding hair and follicles and gums, and some of them even went on to have additional heart problems because uh, blood vessel walls uh, need to be strong and they need that collagen. So vitamin C is necessary, though, and you know where you can get all kinds of vitamin C from. There is a problem, though, of people saying, hey, just take tons and tons of vitamin C every single day because something can happen called rebound malnutrition where your body becomes used to those extra amounts and if all of a sudden you stop taking it, it's like withdrawal, your body starts showing symptoms as if you're not getting enough when in fact you are getting enough but your body's kind of um, not reacting to it anymore. So that's similar in like type 2 diabetes and uh, all kinds of drug addicts and things like that. So take a look at that. Here's a little TOK box you can read in your own time to kind of think about this a little bit as well too. Okay, what else is important? Iodine is important. This is the kind of salt I've been eating as a kid, and I always wondered what Morton iodized salt actually meant. I forgot the actual year they started doing this. I think sometime in the 80s, uh, where it turns out that they found out that iodine was very important in our diet, and there's not a lot of natural sources. Here in Japan, eating seaweed, you get quite a lot of iodine and it turns out iodine is needed for proper functioning of the thyroid gland that produces thyroxine and if you don't get enough of this you get iodine deficiency disorder which can cause permanent brain damage um, and all kinds of horrible things including the growth of a goiter and so they decided uh, and I think a lot of countries do this actually to supplement the salt because everybody puts salt on their food, especially if you eat McDonald's french fries. <clears throat> I don't know if McDonald's french fries salt is iodized, but I'm willing to bet that it is. And that salt there actually has iodine that's been added to it. So it's easy to supplement uh, salt by, add by adding this iodine in, and it's actually prevented millions of cases of iodine deficiency disorder. And we don't even have to think about it. So these decisions by the government are good. Some of them are good. All right, let's go look at... Uh, vitamin, now let's look at fiber first. All right, people talk about fiber, constipation. People like to make jokes about constipation and stuff like that. Fiber is basically plant material uh, that we can't really digest. So cellulose and chitin in various types of cell walls. It does a few things for us. It um, 
increases the bulk of the material that's passing through the intestine, makes it easy for our intestines to push against something to actually produce feces and push it out, prevents constipation. Um, it's been linked to reduce chances of other diseases like hemorrhoids, appendicitis, and bowel cancer. But most importantly, it can prevent obesity because you start to feel more full. You feel satiated. So, and if, you, if it makes you feel full, then you're less likely to keep on like shoving more pasta in your face and leading to obesity, which is a big problem. We're going to see that a little bit later. Also, that fiber could also function in, in slowing down the absorption of sugars. So uh, this is important for people who have diabetes. They want to take foods that are broken down from starch into glucose relatively slowly so that they can monitor their, their levels. If it turns, if the stuff turns into glucose really quickly, then you can get these crazy spikes of, uh, of glucose happening and that could contribute to developing diabetes too. So plants obviously contain a lot of fiber. So eat a lot of cabbage, eat a lot of celery, uh, go for the, avoid the white bread and go for the whole grain breads. Those are fantastic. Finally, when we're in talking about components of the human diet, let's look at vitamin D. If you don't get enough vitamin D, it's almost like you're not getting enough calcium because vitamin D is necessary for proper absorption of calcium in the intestines. So um, not enough vitamin D leads to rickets, skeletal deformities. You've seen pictures of this before too. Some kinds of foods that are high in vitamin D, they're not very common though, uh, especially if you don't like oily fishes like tuna and mackerel. As long as you eat some eggs, I don't, not everybody eats liver. Margarine and milk, a lot of that stuff is artificially added in there too, just like the iodine that we talked about earlier. This brings up an important story. You could write a whole thing about this because it turns out we can synthesize vitamin D in our skin. UV light actually helps to do that. Okay, UV light helps us to actually synthesize vitamin D. But UV light also can cause cancer if there's too much of it and it turns out your skin color so your skin pigmentation plays a role here there's a balance here here's a map of what uh you know i guess people from original parts of the world like a long time ago you know the relative balance of skin color and you can see closer to the equator skin color tended to be darker so it turns out if you're the lighter your skin is the better you are at making vitamin d production vitamin d just hanging out in the sun just for a, a couple minutes a day but uh, the more susceptible you are to actually getting skin cancer. Turns out the darker your skin is, you are very good at protecting yourself from skin cancer and UV ray damage, but you're horrible at actually producing vitamin D. So there's a balance there. And uh, there's a couple stories you can look up of immigration movements where people uh, are moving to places where they're original people were not from. And then now they're experiencing all kinds of problems like... Um, people with really light skin moving to places where uh, they'll get plenty of vitamin D, but a lot of UV ray has caused like crazy incidences of uh, skin cancer or situations where uh, people with dark skin are not producing enough uh, vitamin D. So you have vitamin D deficiency leading to things like rickets. So that was a quick journey looking at all the different components of the diet. So combine that together with part one and you've got everything you need to know about the basics of the components of the diet and what we need to take in and some important issues that come up as well too.